Today, I'll be going over basically everything that you need to know in order to give your custom mobs any kind of attack you would want. Now there are quite a few aspects to this video, so make sure to go into the description or skip to these timestamps shown on the screen in order to skip around to the exact part that you want. Things that will be covered in this video are first a conceptual explanation of how the attack system works, then creating the actual basic attack system using MC function files inside of a data pack, then how to run multiple attacks instead of just a single function file run, and then how to quickly organize the files for different mobs, then how to extend the attacks to last longer than just a single MC function file run, and then how to use ray casting to let your mobs shoot at certain entities, and then finally I'll go over a bunch of examples of different attacks that you could use for your mobs. Alright, so the way that this attack system is going to work is it's first going to detect if there is a player within range, or maybe not a player or any other mob that you want it to be able to attack is in range. So let's say it's three blocks, if it's within three blocks, what it's going to do is it's going to run the attack function and do whatever you want it to attack, and then it's going to set a score for a scoreboard timer, which will then start to count down, and once it hits zero, if you're within radius still, it's going to run attack again. So this will basically make it so that your mob can attack periodically. Now it won't be randomized. If you want to add randomization, you can do that, but this is just an easy way to make your mob attack periodically without having to do too many commands. I opened up the three MC function files we had from the two past custom mob videos. So first I'm going to start with creating the actual scoreboard in load.mc function just because I always start with the load. So what we have to add is a new scoreboard objective type dummy for the for the timer, the cooldown timer. So scoreboard objectives add attack cool and then type dummy. So we could use this for all of the mobs since each mob is only going to have one attack cool, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to have one attack cool dummy type scoreboard and this is going to be used for creating the cooldown for the attack. So now what we want to do is run on all of our custom mobs and detect if there is a player within radius and if there is then we want to attack. So what I'm going to do is do execute as all entities and we want the tag to be our custom mobs tag which is custom underscore mob1 and we want it to be type silverfish because we want the custom mob to be targeted not the armor stand which displays the model. And we also want to detect that the scoreboard for the cooldown is zero because we want to make sure that the cooldown has finished before we attack again. So we'll do scores equals attack cool equals zero. So we haven't actually set up anything that manipulates attack cool yet, but might as well just add this detection right now. So then we want to run at the position of the custom mob and then run if there is an entity of type player within a certain distance. So zero dot dot whatever, so let's say 10 means zero to 10 blocks. So if there is a player within 10 blocks, then we want to do run function mob one, or let's, it's mob demo, and then I'll call it mob one attack. So we haven't actually created this yet, so let me create mob one attack. I'll just add it here in VS Code. You could manually add it if you want to, but I have this open, so might as well. So mob1 attack.mc function. So now that we have this, we are actually going to run something. So for now, I'll just say say hi. And just for testing purposes, I'm going to remove the score requirement just so you can see that it's actually working. So as you can see when I do reload, it says hi, and that's because it's not actually requiring the score requirement right now. So if I were to reload it with the score requirement, it wouldn't work since it doesn't even have the score. So after it runs the attack, we want the score to go up so that it has to spend time cooling down to zero before it could attack again. So under mob one attack, what we want to do is scoreboard players, and then set at S because the entity running this attack command is going to be the custom mob and then we want the scoreboard to be attack cool and we want to set it to whatever you want so I'll say 40 which is two seconds because it's 20 ticks per second and scoreboards go in ticks when I do the removal part 
So I'm going to set it to 40 and we want it to make sure and we want to make sure that it actually cools down. So what I'm going to do is go over to the loop over here and I will do scoreboard players remove and then all entities tag of custom mob one and we want it to be type of silverfish and also we have to make sure that attack cool is equal to one or more because we don't want it to go down into the negatives so then we want to remove one from attack cool like that so now it's going to remove one from the scoreboard attack cool from all of our custom mobs so now that we have that set up now what we want to do is test it but you'll notice that if I test it let's reload if I test it and I'm near it it's not actually working so if I do scoreboard objective set display sidebar and then attack cool as you can see there's nothing on the side and the reason there's nothing there is that we have to initialize it with a value of zero so this is trying to detect if there's a value of zero but the mob doesn't have any value at all it does not default to zero it defaults to no value so I have to make sure to initialize the value of zero for mob one spawn I'm going to do scoreboard players add and then all entities tag equals custom mob one type equals silver fish and I'm going to add to attack cool and just add zero this just makes sure that it starts with some sort of value so now if I go back and reload and I kill this guy now if I summon it you'll see that he actually has a value and on the right side you could see the scoreboard timer if you watch it it goes down to zero then it runs high into the chat and then it just keeps on cycling over and over so now we have it attacking periodically now if we want to we could change the number to whatever number we want to make it a longer delay so let's say 120 or something now it's going to set to a longer delay but you get the idea so now that we set up a system for your custom mob to run a single attack periodically before i show you how to create the actual attacks which will do damage i'm first going to show you how to make your mob run multiple attacks instead of just one and also how to set up the framework basically for creating more advanced or longer attacks that don't just run a single function adding a second attack is extremely easy so the way that we have it now is when it hits zero it runs high so when this hits zero it just runs the attack so all we have to do now is add a second detection because right now it just goes from zero and then it resets back to 120 so all I have to do is add another detection at maybe the halfway point and just so that would be 60 and just run the attack from there so if I duplicate what we have here in order to run the first attack and paste it instead of running at zero I'll run it at 60 which is the halfway point of 120 and I'll just run attack 2 so of course I'll have to make the actual function file for it so I'll go over here and do a new file and it'll be mob1 underscore attack2 dot mc function and now if I just do say attack2 so now what should happen is once it hits 60 it'll run attack2 and once it hits 0 it'll run attack one and reset back to 120 where it can count back down again to repeat both of those attacks so now if I save both of those and return to Minecraft and reload oh, what you should notice is that it says attack 2 when it hits 60 and it says high when it hits 0 now maybe you want something more advanced like in my nether pack where I have the boss that has a lava shot on top of it that charges up before it shoots out and for that you can't just run a single function because if if you run a single function it won't last for as long as it does in the nether pack so i'll show you how to make your attack last longer but before i show you that let me first organize because as you'll notice we have three mc function files for mob one and it can start to get messy once you have multiple mobs so in order to organize it just add a folder so create a new folder and if you're not in um VS code you could just manually create a folder instead of doing it through here but since I have VS code I'm just going to do it through here 
So functions, I'm going to do mob1. And this is a folder, not a function file. So I'm just going to do mob1 here. And I'm going to drag mob1 attack, attack2, and spawn all into this folder so it will be more organized. So I'm going to move those into that folder. But now what we'll have to do is just clean up our code and change it to correctly point to the right um, functions. So inside of loop, anytime where it says like mob demo mob one attack, I'm just going to have to go mob one colon or mob one slash mob one attack mob one slash mob one attack two. And this is just to keep it organized. And if you want, you could do this from the start. And that's what I would recommend do this from the start. But just for the sake of example and keeping stuff simple, I just kept them all separate for the tutorial so far. But now that we have more files, we have to keep it organized. So what I would do is instead of labeling the file mob one again, I would just call it attack and attack two. So then I would go over here and rename it to just attack two and attack one or just attack and then mob one spawn. I'm going to rename that to just spawn. And the reason I could do that is since they're all sitting inside of the mob one folder. So now I'm just going to change mob demo mob one spawn to mob one slash spawn. So now everything is a lot more cleaned up and organized. Right now, the mob attacks are only lasting for a single function run, which is a single tick or equivalent to a 20th of a second. But maybe you want your attack to last longer than that. So let's say you want your mob to charge up a fireball. If you want your attack to be able to last for longer than just a single function, I'll show you how to do that. So let's go into VS Code here, and I'm just going to use my attack 2 for this example. So Right now it's running when it hits exactly 60, but maybe we want it to charge up. So what we want to do is run from 60 or let's say a range. So we want 30 to 60, for example, that's going to last for 30 ticks because that's how fast the scoreboard is going. It's going one, uh, one score per tick. So it's going at a rate of um, 20 ticks per second which means this is lasting for 30 ticks, which means it's going to be about one and a half seconds. So if we want it to run for one and a half seconds, then we would do a range of 30 ticks. So that means that this attack two function is going to be run 30 times. But if we, for example, had something that wanted to charge up a fireball, then we can't be shooting, we can't be running the same command every single time. So what we have to do is first, I'm just gonna label this. This is running as and at the custom mob so now what we're going to do is run detections for the score of the custom mob which means we basically can have a sequence of 30 so what we're going to do is let's say we want to um, charge up a fireball so i'm not actually going to do the charging up of a fireball but i'm going to show you how you would do it so we would do execute if entity actually i could just do as at s and then we would do uh, scores equals, and it would be attack cool is equal to 60. So this is going to be the first attack that runs. Then we're going to do run, say, charging up. So that means this is going to run at exactly 60, which is going to be the first one, because if you remember, our scoreboard is counting down. So it starts at a high number and then it goes down to a lower number, which means 60, which is the highest number of the range, is going to be the first number to be hit. So maybe we want to run charging up. So let's say we want some sounds. So run, say, charging up sounds. So we'd put our sounds there. And then maybe we want to have particles play. So maybe we want it from, let's say, 50 to 60. We want it to be charging up. And for your actual attack, you're going to be, instead of using a say command, you're going to be using an actual particle command or an actual uh, play sound command. But this is just for the sake of example. And then maybe we're going to actually run the fireball later on. So then we're going to do, instead of fix 50 to 60, we're going to do at exactly 30. So once it hits the bottom, we're going to say run, um, let's see, say and then summon fireball at player and let's say 30 to 60. So if we have this right now, what's going to happen is 
in a range from 30 to 60, it's going to run the attack to function. And within this attack to function, when it hits 60, it's going to run the initial charging up sounds. And from 30 to 60, so throughout the entire duration of the attack sequence, it's going to be charging up the, it's going to be running the charging up particles. And then not until it hits 30 at the very end, will it run the actual attack, which is summoning the fireball. So now if we go into game, instead of running a single function, what it's going to do is it's going to run multiple things. So as you can see, it says charging up sounds and it spams charging up particles and then it finally summons the fireball. Alrighty, so now that I covered different ways to run your different attack commands, what I'm going to do is cover different examples of attacks you could do. First, I'm going to start off with important concepts you should know, and then I'm just going to uh, power right through with a bunch of uh, like specific examples that you may or may not want to use. So as you can see here, I have a raycast, and a raycast is basically when you have your mob shoot a projectile in the direction that the player was. So that is basically going to make them act like a skeleton, or in this case, as you can see, it shoots an explosive projectile towards you. So I'll show you how to do that. So first of all, I'm going to be using the attack MC function we just used, and I already created it here, but I'll show you how it all works. So inside of attack to MC function, what I actually did is I replaced the say commands with the actual commands. So if you remembered, we had the charging uh, play sound. I replaced it with an actual play sound. And then for the particles, I replaced it with the actual particles, so you could see it charging up with the flame particles. And then once it hit 31, what I did was I summoned an area effect cloud, which is basically just some random entity that's invisible and does not cause a lot of lag. And it also automatically kills itself after this set duration of 200 ticks. And I summon it with the tags of mob1ball, just to signify that it is a fireball that I will use for mob1 in my commands. And it also has the uh, tag of not rotated because I still need to rotate it in the commands in order to face the nearest player. So then what I do is once it goes down to 30 now, is I execute as the mob one ball that has not been rotated yet within one block of the custom mob. So that would be the mob ball that was just summoned. Then I want to execute facing the nearest player and facing their eyes specifically. And then I want to run teleport the current entity. In this case, the current entity would be referencing the area effect cloud. And I want to teleport it to the current position. But it's not the current position of the area effect cloud. It is the current position of the area effect cloud, but also while facing the nearest entity. So I'm teleporting it to current X, Y, and Z. And I'm also including the X and Y rotation. So that's what these other two tildes are. So this is basically ra rotating it to face the nearest player. And then after that, I'm going to remove the tag of not rotated because it now has been rotated. So now back in loop.mc function, I have one looping function here, which is executing on all of those um, mob one balls that have been summoned and that have that do not have the tag of not rotated because I want to make sure that it has been rotated and then it runs the function of the ball raycast. So now inside of this function, it's not too complicated. It looks kind of complicated, but it's pretty simple. So basically what happens is it executes if there is a attackable entity nearby. Right now I just have it as players, but you could add more entities if you want. And so if there is a an attackable entity in two blocks, then it will summon a creeper and then it will kill itself. Or if there is a, or if it runs into a non-air block, then it will also explode and then kill itself. And then after that, it will teleport forward so it could do the next check, and that's how it keeps going forwards, kind of like a bullet. And also the whole while, it has a flame particle and a play sound particle, just to make sure that you could actually see the projectile flying through the air and you actually know how to dodge it. So that's all you have to do in order to add a raycast attack. Here's a random list of attacks that you could do for your mob. I'm just going to show you this just to give you inspiration and to show you things that are possible. The ones in the first line you could probably get done with just one attack, but these ones you would probably have to do in an extended attack. And these are just some unique ideas if you need help, but also I hope this gives you an idea of what could be possible. There are definitely more advanced things that could be possible, but I just want you to know that these all may sound uh, complicated, but they are all definitely possible with data packs.
All right, I wrote up some example attacks here and I'm just gonna go through them as the custom mob attacks with them. So I'm just gonna explain like basically how they work. So the first one that's going to happen is the effect command, which I'll be using to give the wither effect to all players in a 10 block radius. So when I summon this mob, you'll see that it'll give wither. And as you can see, I'm getting withered. So now the next one that I'll be showing is a basic summon command to just summon reinforcements. In this case, it'll be a blaze five blocks above it. So if I look up, you'll see that a blaze gets summoned in. And the next one, which you might have just saw started already, is that I use the attribute command to change the attribute of generic movement speed. So you could basically use this to change different modes of your mob. So I did this in my nether mob pack with my wraith, which swapped between a long range and a dashing and attacking uh, mode. So you could use this. There are other ones you could change, of course, for attributes, but I'm just using speed for an example. So I set it to 1.5 and then I set it back down to a lower number. So as you can see, when I when it's up, it's like dashing around like crazy and just trying to smack you. And as you can see, the next one is that it summoned an area effect cloud and then it summoned fire. So the area effect cloud, if you saw that green cloud that just showed up, is an area effect cloud which is actually being used with a radius of 2 a duration of 30 which is one and a half seconds and poison so it has poison two, and it lasts for one and a half seconds so if you walk within that area effect cloud then you will get the effect of the area effect cloud so you could use that for your own custom mobs for your attacks or you could even use it as a passive thing so maybe you want a mob that heals you when you're nearby then you could use it to instead of do a poison area effect cloud maybe a regeneration cloud as a friendly mob but you could also uh, just use area effect clouds for a bunch of different things depending on what you want your mob to do. And of course you could use the fill command to replace blocks. So in this example I made it place fire onto the ground to attempt to burn you if you get too close. And that's what I did with the actual uh, crimson serpent inside of my nether mob plus data pack. So as you can see there's a bunch of different ways to actually create custom attacks for your mobs. And those are just a few examples. And if you want help creating your own custom mob, don't forget to try to join the Discord server and maybe ask for suggestions on how you could create your own custom attacks.